Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Good to see you. Hi, Mrs. Goswish here. Mr. Kane, what's on your board now? Oh, that... That's a picture of me in a fictional place I like to call home. Home? Home. Home on the range? Hmm, Auntie M, where is home? There's no place like home. Yes, I wouldn't know. We're always here. Eh, hey, it's all good. <laughs> At least we got good chemistry. Yep, there you go. So we're starting out here, guys, with Unit 4. Uh, unit 4 is about the periodic table. It's kind of a brief chapter, so only about a week here. We want you guys to understand the history of and the organization of the periodic table, uh, according to John Newland, Dmitri Mendeleev, and a guy by the name of Mosley. So these three guys are the main characters, right? Because there are other secondary characters with the periodic table, but these guys are the main ones you got to know. Correct, Mr. Yeah, Kane? There's other characters like Ernie and Bert. Yeah. Big Bird. Yeah, okay. well, all those guys, yeah. All right. Explain why elements in a group have the similar chemical and physical properties. So there's actually a reason for that. Define the term periodic trend, and no one identified the names and characteristics of each group slash family slash family. Uh, we kind of interchange the name group and family, so don't panic. It is the same thing. So Patterns and properties. It turns out that the periodic table is a tool for organizing properties. It's kind of like a supermarket. The supermarket has a bunch of aisles in it to help organize where things are inside of it. For instance, if I was going to go try and buy some cheese, I would definitely not walk down the cracker aisle. Or the bread aisle. True. Exactly. I'd, I'd walk down the dairy aisle instead. The periodic table um, is meant for organizing the properties of the elements, and, and elements can share different properties. Things like the phase of matter that they're in, Color, reactivity. Ooh, I love the reactivity, especially with that group 1A. Yeah, and and you know what? Each group has a different reactivity with different elements. So some are reactive with oxygen in a certain way. Some are reactive with chlorine in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. salts. They can form salts. And uh, how many valence electrons they actually have. We haven't talked about valence electrons yet, but we'll get there. We're gonna. And et cetera, et cetera. There are probably dozens of things that we could pull out. But in regular chemistry, will we pull out dozens? Have we talked about et cetera yet, Mr. King? Et cetera? <laughs> uh, isn't that a Latin word? <laughs> meaning there's a lot more here, but you have to get a doctorate degree? Yep. Yeah, I think that's the meaning. Ooh, Mr. Newlands. <clears throat> Mr. Newlands. Oh, hey, check it out. It's an English chemist. Oh, another one. Does that mean he teaches English? Yes. <laughs> All right, so it's about 1860. The Civil War is breaking out in America. And meanwhile, this guy John Newlands has nothing to do in Britain, so he decides to try and arrange the 60 el known elements. There were only 60? Well, there were still 114 elements, but they only oh. knew about 60. Okay. Know? And there's a difference between how many there are and... How many are actually on the table. Right. And there wasn't a table yet, so there but, were none on the yeah. table. So, so John actually, so, so John actually gets, uh, gets, gets credit for the first organization. So he places these elements in his own table. Uh, he arranges the elements by property and by mass, and he notes that properties are repeated every eight elements. Okay. So the ninth element would be a different property from one through eight? Is that what that means? Uh, yeah, it would actually have a similar property to element number one. So it would yeah, okay. have different properties than all, right. all of those elements you just listed. It, it okay. would be repeat. And he arranged it so that elements in the Five. same row, now guys, you got to remember, there are columns and rows. So columns go up and down and rows go across. Go across. Mm -hmm. So his elements were all similar in the rows. And across. rows are horizontal. Okay. Rows are horizontal. Yeah. So this is the law of octaves. Basically, what you're seeing here is you're seeing eight elements that with have similar properties. Properties and characteristics. And so characteristics. He set it up with the groups going across, across the table. Okay. Right, which is not how the modern periodic table is established, okay. but... Ooh, he's scary looking, Mr. Yeah, Kane. Yeah, he's, uh, that, that, that's a, that's a good looking picture. I like his whiskers. Mm-hmm. He's a little scary looking. Yeah, just, just a wee bit. Dmitri Mendeleev. All right, so Dmitri Mende Mendeleev, Mendeleev? Does it matter which part of Russia you're from, how you say yeah, it? Yeah, Mendeleev, Mendeleev. Now, if I remember a story right, him and another guy working on the periodic table, he got to the printers first, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Do you remember his name? No, but I remember the other guy was in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> so the Russian chemist takes tops on this yep, one, Yep, right? he got that one. Okay. Um, but Mendeleev's contributions. Basically, he's, he bases all of his work on Newland's research, 
And he gets credit for the first orderly arrangement, so we actually call this a periodic table. Okay. Newlands was not periodic. Guess what? There's three more elements now oh. that are known. So between the time that Newlands did his research and Mendel was true in his work, he found, six, uh, found three more. Okay, so he also does things by atomic mass as well as okay. properties, and he uses the symbols. He's just coming up with a different arrangement. Uh, what Mendeleev did that Newland didn't okay. is he left gaps. All right, so. And he actually made predictions where those gaps were. He expected some element to be discovered later and put in those spots. Exactly. All right. Okay. So this is Mendeleev's first attempt. If you take a careful look at the table, you can probably try and see and figure things out. If you look here, you can see that lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, these are all elements that we know are all in the first group of the periodic table today. Okay. And they're all in the same horizontal row, just like Newlands might have set up. So he went across also, he put his families across also. Mm -hmm. His initial attempt was putting his families across. Just above that one I see the, floor, the halides, the fluorine, the chlorine, the bromine, and the iodine. Right, there we go. Right. And I see a bunch of question marks, Mr. Kane. What are yeah. the question marks? Here's a qu about? here's a question mark here. Here's a question mark here. There's another one somewhere. I know there's three. Oh, here's one. Yep. Here's Oops. one here. So there are several question marks on here. What these question marks are is where he was actually predicting that there should be an element. He realized between aluminum here and this element U R, which we don't have a symbol U R today, uh, so I don't know what element that is. But he realized that some element was supposed to be in between. And he actually predicted that it should have a mass of 68. Okay. Same thing happened here between silicon and tin. He predicted that there should be some element in between with a mass of 70. Um, which that, that's, uh, that's actually important work there. And these are all listed by a mass, not atomic number, correct? Right, because we haven't discovered atomic number yet. Right, okay. In order to have an atomic number, you have to know the number of protons. Uh, which we did last unit. Okay. Uh, who discovered the proton now? Mm, the proton was discovered by Mr. Rutherford? Yeah, I think I think it was Rutherford, and With he did his work. Foil. It was well after 1869, so Dimitri couldn't have used yeah. that. Oh, by the way, guys, if you haven't paid attention yet, read the title. Hey, extra credit. No, I'm kidding. No extra credit. <laughs> okay. So in 1871, two years later, Mendeleev decided to take another attempt at this. He decided his first attempt that was mimicking Newlands wasn't good enough. So what he did was he actually, if you read the Russian here, this says group one. one. So he made up a group one, which has hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on and so forth down it. If you look at our modern periodic table, you'll see some similarities there. So now he's going down. Right, now okay. he's actually going down. So he switched it up. Instead of going across his families, now we're going up and down, which is how we have our periodic table structured today. Okay. Okay. And notice here he's got some uh, idea here. This element and oxygen. Okay, so that, that there's a, there's a uh, how many of this element plus oxygen that it takes oh. for, so that this is the reactivity with oxygen. Okay. Here, this group only takes one of the element plus one oxygen. Mm -hmm. This group needs two of the element plus three oxygens in order to form a compound. Mm. And here we've got some compounds with hydrogen. Apparently, he didn't know about or they don't form compounds yeah. with hydrogen. Okay, but that, that's interesting stuff and that'll come in useful in the activity in class. Uh, notice again here, guys, he's got a couple elements where he doesn't know the name of it yet, but he predicts the mass. Okay, so for future. Mm -hmm, for future. And uh, the, well, we'll get into that. All right, Mendeleev's table organizes in groups and periods. Okay, groups being which direction? Groups are up and down. Okay, Families. So up and, up down. and down. And periods being? Across. Across, okay. Groups or family? Oh, there oh, we there go. There you Group, go. Groups and families are vertical, uh huh, and they share they share properties. Okay. Periods are horizontal and increase by mass. As you read to the right. Mm -hmm. 1871 left space for unknown elements. Which we were just mentioning. Those are the ones we just circled. Yeah. And uh, he called them Ica something. So he uh, the one that was next to silicon he called Ica silicon. Uh, the one that was next to I don't remember what the elements are, but he called them Ica something. Ica in in Russian means close to. Okay. The really neat thing for Mendeleev is that uh, only 15 years later he was still alive. 
those three elements were discovered. Oh. And the properties that he predicted that they would have came true. Were correct. Oh, that's neat. I know. How useful of a tool is this table that is periodic that Mendel have created? It's extremely useful. So his predictions about the elements were right. Periodic law overtakes the law of octaves. The table is periodics, periodical. Yeah, it's, it's something that happens every once in a while, right? Yeah. Kind of like the ties that I wear on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. Today's table is based off of repeating trends and properties based on increasing atomic mass. So that sounds like a definition. Yep. I wonder if that'll be important. It's a law. Periodic hmm. law definition? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? And this, uh, this, period this periodicity is known as periodic law. It, it kind of gets periodic. It, it almost repeats itself here. Yeah. 